A lot has happened. Come scout with me. Is it November? No, it's just drought. September 1st, Cedar County. So some of the things that are really concerning me now, especially if you haven't been hit by wind yet, but you have been hit by drought, is stock quality. So honestly, ugh, for the amount of rain that we've missed in a lot of places, it is astonishing that we have ears that look this good. We had enough moisture so that we don't have a whole lot of tip back. Right now I'm in an area that has got like three quarters of an inch of rain since tasseling. So the fact that we haven't had tip back is absolutely magnificent. Um, but we are getting that early plant death and we did get to black layer a little quicker than we want to. And because of that early plant death, um, gonna have some really flaky, really light test weight in some of these areas. But the plant was trying. Now, the thing that's gonna happen and that we have to remember is that these plants died early and at the expense of the stalk. So we've got a lot of cannibalization. Um, if we do get some wind, this stuff's gonna fall over pretty gosh darn easy, um, especially with this weight hanging off of it. So we got some corn here. Uh, it's pretty clearly coming to the end of its life, but it's also having early death. A lot of that is caused by a lack of water. So we come down here and we start noticing that uh, these roots are obviously very dead. Um, at this time, as we start getting close to black layer, roots are going to start dying anyway because we don't necessarily need these. The plant is almost at physiological maturity. As we look at these nodes here, they're kind of kind of an off color, almost like a gray green. You can feel pushing on it that there's something, they're kind of hollow. Um, and then you've also got these colors almost kind of seeping from the node. And then when you look at that node, that inner node closest to the soil surface, that doesn't look very healthy either. So when we split these open, you can see, if I can get the right light, you can see that the node is kind of rotten out the pith is gone. We just kind of got that stringy stuff left. The phloem and the xylem is all that's left. Um, and then we look in here. So we've got kind of a pink color. And then you can see that that crown is not in really good shape. We look down further and we've got some pink roots here. So it's looking like we've got fusarium in this plant. So pink can either be gibberella or fusarium. A uh, gibberella will typically be a darker color and it will usually be kind of more in between those nodes where the, um, the fusarium is usually going to start at the node and then spread out throughout and a lot of times give you that characteristic pink color. Um, we also get a lot, um, fusarium likes to kill crowns for some odd reason. So I've got a fun one here. Um, in a field where we started having some stuff dying early, trying to figure out why. So I know that a lot of us think about crown rot and stalk rot as being an issue when we have too much water, but there are some that prefer it hot and dry. Really good example of that is fusarium. There are some fusarium species specifically that enjoy weather like this, as well as things like red root rot. Um, so when we look at some of those pathogens, they're actually very predominant in like dryland Nebraska. So issues that we will have this year are probably going to be some of those issues that are more typical of Nebraska. Here's an example. So clearly we are in a droughty area. We've got stocks that, um, well, they just aren't quite worth their snot. There's not much in there. Dig the plant up because you always dig. And we've got this really really red color. I mean, this, this is just beautiful. So what this is an indicator of right here is red root rot. So red root rot is going to be that those fusarium species. Now what can make some of these things kind of difficult is that depending on how dead this plant is, if it's been dead for a while, or if this plant perhaps had fusarium first, or if it was just dying because of drought, is that red root rot just taking advantage of the situation or is it what caused this issue? So what I'm gonna do is dig up some of these plants around it 
that are still alive, that are just fine, plants that are halfway dead, to kind of see if we can try and figure out what came first, chicken or egg, red root rot or plants dying from drought. So I've got this plant opened up here. You can tell that this isn't a plant that has ghosted out early, but I split it open and you can see the nodes here are fine. The stalk itself is nice and white and healthy, but as we come down to the crown and we're looking down in there, the crown is probably what has gone out first and these plants that are completely dead. So if we can find those plants that are still alive and kind of find what kind of infection we have on these, it gives us a really good in, um, indicator of what's been happening to these others. One of the other things that you can look for, um, particularly for red root rot, is something called pycnidia. So pycnidia is the fruiting body, fruiting body, um, of this. So you can kind of see, geez, it's hard to see in this light, but there's, we've got like some white fungus growing here and these little black dots. So this is the pycnidia of that red root rot. Brown marmorated stink bug. Stop! For better or for worse, a lot of my job is finding the goofy stuff. I'm not saying it was the aliens, but it was the aliens. So clearly I've teleported. Nah, just a different day. September 2nd, um, I'm up here in one of the hardest hit areas from that uh, September 24th windstorm. Now this area did get hit by heavy winds, um, but we are seeing some product differentiation. Um, so here <laughs> I'm sitting in the middle of a field. Yes, sitting. Um, and it is as flat as it can get. And what's interesting about this scenario um, in particular is that most everywhere that I've been, you know, we're looking at mid-season corn. It is about half milk lime and we're seeing those stalks kink at about knee high and about all of them are that way. This, however, is 113 day corn on highway three. So it's, it's very full season corn for the geography that we're in right now. Um, so it was just getting to dent, not a whole lot of cannibalization. Clearly by all the green, it wasn't really drought stress. We also have minimum till um, bean ground. But the way this stuff went down is it actually broke at the crown. In some of these places, the, the crown actually pulled up. So it kind of snapped right at the crown and it broke off the nodal roots. Now, I was able, I did see some of this in the derecho area last year. And here's what I'm coming up with. Because you can tell, like this stalk was in really good shape. And when I split the crowns and split the roots and the stalks in both a, uh, a plant where that was standing and a plant that was not, um, the crowns appear the same. The stalks are all in pretty good shape, not a whole lot of cannibalization going on. Um, and then I split the crowns and the stalks of the stuff that's standing and the inside looks exactly like this. So we know that, especially when we have a dry spring and the soil works up really fluffy, um, you get a wind and you get more root lodging because those roots just don't have as much to hold on to. So when I look at a hybrid like what's behind me that tends to have a very large, very good root mass, an excellent anchor on it, it's a very large plant type. Um, and it also has a very good stalk on it. It's full season corn, so it hadn't cannibalized itself. It hadn't been hit quite as bad by the drought, so the stalk is very good. But when you have these kind of winds pushing on that plant, something has to give way. And in this particular scenario, the crown was the weakest part of that plant, I guess, um, starting to get woody. Um, and that is where it gave way because nowhere else on this plant was it weak. So that's just where it happened to give. And all of that really comes to 
this hybrid in particular, what I'm seeing doesn't make me think that I would not want to plant this hybrid. We just had a really freak storm and the timing of it and having full season corn and all the stuff that I just mentioned is what caused this to happen. Speaking of issues that usually Nebraska has that we might have this year, our good friend Aspergillus is back. So Aspergillus is the uh, number one um, ear rot that you find in like Nebraska, Africa. Um, it's also the number one top offender for creating mycotoxins. It thrives in hot, dry, droughty conditions. So keep an eye out for that sucker. So these kinked stalks is probably the most common type of damage that I am finding in my wind area. Um, I would say anything from about 70 and worse wind, I'm not gonna say good product, bad product, good for wind, bad for wind, good stocks, bad stocks. Um, if the corn looks like this for you know 65 plus mile an hour winds at this point in the season with the drought that we had, I'm gonna say you tried really hard, you had some good ears on you, um, but I don't, ex I don't expect you to stand after what we put you through. If there is a product standing in those areas, I'm like, good for you. It doesn't mean this is a bad one and that's a good one. It's just like, hey, look at you. Good work. Um, if I am seeing trends, once we get to kind of those fringe areas where we're seeing more of that 55 um, to 60 mile an hour, uh, the worst down stuff is exactly what I would expect. Um, the drier areas that maybe didn't get the wind <clears throat> or the uh, soil type differences or hybrids that were closer to black layer. So if we had earlier season corn, um, there was just more stock cannibalization at that point um, because it was dry. We we're sucking stuff out of the stock to fill the ear and, and it had more of it done. Now, I've been talking with a couple of my guys that went through this uh, last year in 2020 with the derecho. And of the advice that I've gotten from these guys, the number one tip is be patient with it. You're going to be able to get more than what you think. So just be patient with it. We still got a lot of yield sitting out here. It's just gonna be a matter of getting it out of the field. Um, another really good tip that, um, that I think a guy had given to me besides for being patient is get after it before it dries down. Once you get black layer, once it's to an acceptable moisture, go out and get it because we're going to see these stalks breaking. If we let this plant completely dry down and if we are trying to let that grain dry down in the field, we're gonna start getting this stuff breaking right here as soon as that head gets it. So get after it absolutely as soon as you can. Another good tip was to make sure that the header pitch is at the manufacturer um, kind of, you know, their, their settings for down corn. So make sure you have that pitch right. Another one was just try things out. Um, if you have those augers on the end, try it without the reel first. You might not need it. Uh, try with uh, or with the reel, without the reel, um, some different angles if you're having some issues. Find what's working and then go at it with some patience. We're having quite a confusing year on soybeans. Um, I, I contend that growing soybeans is like putting Holsteins in the feedlot because it seems like a good idea time. Um, it's cheaper up front than growing corn, uh, but then they get to about 1,100 pounds and they die. Seems like that's what soybeans do. They get, you know, they get this big and then they start dying. In most cases, it's because of sudden death, BSR and or white mold. Basically, we're seeing a fair amount of sudden death show up. Um, high incidence, low severity, um, and field wide. And from the SDS portion, it just kind of seems like it's at the same level all the way across from these fields. And really when I look at it and you look at SDS, we all think about SDS as being cold and wet, but we weren't wet this spring. But that SDS infection happens in a very small window as that bean is germinating and emerging. And when you think about when we typically have these 
areas, these spots that sudden death starts in is because that spot was cold and wet, which meant that that window of infection was bigger. When we look at this last year, all of the soil, the entire field was cold. So the entire field had a much longer infection window. And I think that might be why we are seeing this kind of field wide, but not very severe um, incidences of SDS. I'm also seeing a fair amount of BSR, brown stem rot, probably more brown stem rot than I've really ever seen in the past, which their foliar symptoms uh, between SDS and BSR can be very, very similar. So it's really important to go ahead and break that stem open so that you can see if you've got BSR or SDS. Also white mold is starting to show up. Again, it's just salt and peppered throughout the field. We did have the weather for it. I know it felt hot in a lot of cases, but it would be really hot and then it would cool off. And we definitely had the moisture, especially up north to make it happen, especially when we got those winds to push these beans down and create that micro environment for the white mold. Now, the biggest question obviously is, did I waste my money on SDSC treatments? Absolutely, we did not. Um, I am curious to know what it would have looked like if we hadn't treated so many beans with Saltro or Olivo. Um, but unless you had a check, you don't really know. I would continue to go forward and use those seed treatments how we have in the past. Um, the other thing is a lot of this SDS and white mold is starting to show up later in the season. So I'm not totally convinced that we are going to have a lot of it really actually affecting much of our yield.